What's up, Exiles? It's Ephix here, and I'm back with another PoE build. This build can clear all content, does Uber Lab easily, and clears maps in no time. Right now, if we take a look at gear, you can see I'm wearing a lot of extremely expensive stuff. But I started this league with nothing, and I'm going to show you how I went from rags to riches. Let's start with the main idea of this build. Get enough damage so that you can use quantity gear like gold worms, venters, sedimas, viscos, etc. Then use that quantity to get richer, faster, and replace your old stuff with op gear. So what I did was make a build that takes advantage of the interaction between Valpact, Blood Rage, and the Wretch. This enables you to get a really nice DPS boost, sometimes over 10% while also taking advantage of nearly endless flasks, which also boosts your DPS. Because Blood Rage is constantly ticking away your HP and giving you frenzy charges, you're always leeching and getting the full effect of the wretch, and Valpact greatly increases that. So let's take a look at what I mean. Here is my leech on hit currently. Now, the wretch is going to do 200% of that, which is double the amount. You can see that in this case, that's almost 10% more damage. You can also stack that with almost endless flasks due to the wretch as well, and you have effectively increased your character's damage by quite a bit. To get a better understanding of how the wretch works, you can see here that I'm using a gray bow with only ice shot and elemental focus, so I can't freeze a mob with this attack. With southbound gloves as well, I can only kill frozen targets, so technically right now I should be unable to kill anything. Hmm, not so much. Let's take off the wretch and try again. So you can see here that now I'm unable to kill anything. Even without leeching, the wretch was still killing mobs with reflected damage. So hopefully you can see the damage output that I'm talking about. So this was my gear basically after finishing Act 10. Five link bows are cheap, um, bellies are pretty cheap, as well as Starks. Basically all this gear here is available on PoE trade for around a chaos each, except maybe a belly. Even these flasks are all standard drops. Sulfur for Onslaught, Diamond Crit, Adzeris for the Leech, and Increased Element Fizz Damage, and of course you're going to need that Adrenaline and a good Healing Potion. My first step was to start mapping in this gear, and while doing that I used the Chaos Recipe and the Exalted Shard Recipe to make currency, along with, you know, selling your Div Cards and whatnot. Then I made my first purchase as a Wind Ripper. For this you can get any bow, um, but later you're going to want one with max crit and attack speed. So after this you should see quite a bit more currency and gear drops while mapping and be able to save up for a wretch. Then you can get yourself some gold worms as well. Try to get the 20% on those, but settle for 18 or 19 if you can't afford the 20. Once you find your favorite shaped map to farm and sell drops, you'll be able to save for more upgrades. I went with a Tomb Fist for the Maim and Intimidate, but note you will also need to buy some nice jewels. Go for max life and elemental damage. Next, I wanted to get rid of my Silver Flask, so I replaced it with a Dying Sun. Make sure you get one with reduced charges so you can get two uses from it, and look for over 20% area of effect. After that, I saved up around 8x and bought Farul's Chest which gives you nearly permanent maximum power and frenzy charges, speed, and crit with Aspect of the Cat. I six linked this one myself for pretty cheap and then replaced my rings with higher max life, higher res, and crafted Aspect of the Cat onto one as well. This also enabled me to drop Assassin's Mark because I didn't need the power charges and picked up Frostbite which further increases my damage. Now with all this damage, the speed I'm clearing maps, I didn't even need the use of gold worms anymore. So I bought a nice pair of bubonic trails and enchanted them myself. Again, you're gonna need to also buy nice jewels if you go this route. 
Shortly after, I got a new necklace with DPS stats and a lot of strength and intellect, and also a nice quiver with plus one and some res and life. So you can see, I literally started at nothing and worked up to this gear with this strategy. So for leveling, you are basically going to alternate between DPS and life. So first grab these close ones, then work your way over to the life regen and down to the cold defense. Similarly, we'll go down and get life, then pick up Point Blank and Fangs of Frost. Point Blank will be a great DPS boost in early game throughout leveling as well, so get to that quickly. If you need Strength or Int, you can get it here. Then head over left and get up to that Mana Leech. Move over to Art of the Gladiator, get all the life, and then down again for the Jewel Socket and Golem's Blood. You may want to skip the Frenzy Charge for now until later on. Then move back right and continue up the tree just alternating between damage, life, damage, life. Make sure you get this jewel for ice shot as well. It honestly makes clearing a joke and it's worth a jewel socket in my opinion. Acrobatics is also a lifesaver so make sure you get that as soon as you can. And after that head straight up so you can get all these nodes with the intelligence since you will definitely be needing it at this point. After you get all these nodes here, fill in the places you missed. For ascendancies, always go for Tailwind first, as it will make leveling and mapping faster. So take Gathering Winds for your first ascendancy. After Cruel Lab, you'll want to get fast and deadly, because you will find a lot of arrows missing around these levels, so you will need the accuracy, as well as the mobility you'll get from Blink Arrow Reduced Cooldown. When you clear Merciless and Uber Lab, you're going to pick up far shot and the plus one arrow. These are the least important in terms of leveling, but the most important for mapping and endgame. For skills and leveling, you will start with split arrow and link it with lesser multiple projectiles, cold damage, weapon elemental damage, and mirage archer as soon as you can get those five links. When you get high enough, replace split shot with ice shot and LMP with GMP. You will get a Lyra for your bandit buff for the crit multi and resist, but some may want the two skill points, so that is optional. When you get access to auras, you're going to want to use Hatred and Herald of Ice, but later on when you get Windripper, you're going to switch to Anger or Wrath. More on that at the end. Set up your Herald of Ice with Curse on Hit and Assassin's Mark for power charges, and of course you can use Blood Rage for Frenzy charges as well. Make sure you also use an Immortal Call and cast when damage taken, like most builds use. For your Golem, I'd use an Ice Golem for crit and accuracy. For your Barrage setup in your chest, have at least Barrage, Weapon Elemental Damage, and Added Cold. Mirage Archer you can add in later, and much later you can add increased crit multi, crit strike chance, slow projectiles, or whatever happens to be the best DPS in your build. I also like to run a decoy totem, which is helpful on bosses, black boxes, really anywhere. For Pantheon, I run Solaris for the elemental damage reduction and AoE avoidance. This is my favorite of the major ones. For the minor, I use Rislatha for the flash charges, since remember we're running Valpact, and the extra flash recovery at low HP. You can always switch to other ones if you like those better though. In my current setup, my links look like this. You can see I did have to drop my golem, but the DPS I get from all of this other damage more than makes up for it. Some debate may be had on Auras, but I've found that once I got Windripper, Wrath and Anger were both better DPS than Hatred. I chose Anger because I don't want too much lightning damage. I want the mobs to get frozen, not shocked, and both Anger and Wrath are very similar in damage overall. This can also be subbed out for Purity of Fire, for example, if you need the extra resistance in some situations. Alright guys, thank you for watching, I hope this video helps people to get a great start and end up with a build that they're happy with. I'm probably going to be posting some sort of follow up video depending on what people want to see. So make sure you leave me a comment and let me know what questions or other videos you want to see of this build.
Also, leave me a like, and as always, be sure to sub for more content.